Welcome back to Exploring Growth Podcast. So glad you're here. If you're a small service-based business trying to hire your first or maybe third salesperson, um, this episode's for you. All right, welcome back, everybody. Exploring Growth. We're glad everybody's here. I've got a great guest on today, Mark Stewart. And um, we. this is another one of those where we're out in the, you know, LinkedIn spheres, interspheres, and we find each other and start chatting. Uh, and so that's kind of how this came together. And, um, and I'm glad to have him here today because I think today's discussion is going to be very beneficial for primarily the small businesses or startup businesses. Um, if you're, if you're, you know, running a mid-sized company, don't tune out just yet. Cause I think there's a lot of value you can take from what we're going to talk about as well, but, but, but really geared towards, uh, he's had a lot of, you know, good background in, in startups and, and, and working with smaller businesses and, um, Right now, um, Mark's Mark's been with uh, Field Routes for a number of years, almost six years. Uh, he's working with Field Routes as a software platform that helps service-based businesses um, do a lot of things. And he has been primarily in a sales role, in, which he is in now, uh, and has been, you know, like hiring a lot of salespeople, hiring a lot of different people, and been part of the hiring process. So when we got to talking, we thought, you know, what we should talk about is something that's he's kind of built an expertise in over the time and that is hiring people but kind of respective to sales you know this this is one of those topics that um it doesn't really matter how big of a company you are you always have this need where you know who do we get to come on board that is high quality can can go out and either hunt fish you know gather whatever whatever you know methodology you go about and that will stick, you know, to the culture and be part of the company um, and, you know, and perform. Right. Um, I mean, I know in my company, it's been a challenge to uh, being small to to give over some of that sales, um, you know, th th those roles, you know, when it's just easy for me to do it. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And so with with that introduction, welcome, Mark. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so let's let's get into it. Um, you know, prior to this, we were talking about um, kind of, I guess the the moniker I'd give it is like the do's of don't the do's and don'ts of hiring quality people. Again, we're kind of kind of stick to sales a little bit because I think that's a big need, but I'm sure it will bleed into other roles. Um, let you know, kick us off here. Like, what is it when when you think about hiring salespeople? What what's the number one thing that comes to mind where you you say okay if if any company just knew that they could just do this, then that would kind of get them launched. Oh, a hundred percent. And I'll give you a little background to it. At Field Routes, you know, I was employee number nineteen, so I started yeah. off, and now we have over two hundred employees. So I've helped a lot uh, with our company. But before I worked at Fortune five hundred companies, where I was a manager and helped hire a lot of you know young sales talent, and I've done it for multiple companies at this point, but a lot of this expertise kind of comes from seeing thousands of companies mm -hmm. and seeing, you know, hearing the stories of my best friend calling and say, oh, this has fallen apart and this is why. And, and so that's the kind of thing that the number one mistake, um, I think when, when you just said that, the number one mistake I see, and mm -hmm. it, it happens with me too, I'm not saying we're perfect and this right. doesn't go for everybody. I'm not sitting here saying right. this is what everyone needs to do, but Hiring your best friend from college or um, <laughs> family, that is usually where I see a lot of these mistakes uh, happen. Now, there's right. there's a lot of things that I see done right and how they do it, but that's probably the number one thing that I personally have problems with because I want to hire my best friend. Like, hey, we hung out in college. It was it was a lot of yeah, fun. Sure. Why, why don't we do that in business? Yeah, there's so what's the problem? That, I mean, what, what's the problem? Why can't I hire my best friend? Yeah, do you think not a big deal? But I think the problem is when I've seen it done wrong, is the expectations are different. Like you sure. hiring your best friend, I'm expecting you to work, you know, just as hard as I work. And that right. person hiring says, I only want to work half as hard. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you figure that out three months into it. Yeah. And then there's all kinds of problems. And so I think that the people that do it right have like an expectation up front. This is what I'm expecting you to do. And this is the results I need from you. If you don't have these results, I need you to leave. Like, I don't want to fire you because you're my best friend. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're not doing this, we can't, you can't continue working here. Like in advance, yeah. I need to understand. And then they need to come to you and be like, 
that's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, then you can have that discussion, but have it at the beginning. Yeah, yeah you know, you know not, the thing that sticks out to me when, when you're talking is, could, you know, if you're going to hire this person, could you fire them? And if the answer is no, or it would be really difficult, then you might have to think twice about hiring them. Oh, absolutely. And then I hear a lot of stories like from the other end, the people that get hired by their best friend. Sometimes you manage someone differently because, hey, you're my best friend. I'm going to say this really terrible thing to you, to your face, mm -hmm. you know, or I'm going to be harder on you because I know you, <clears throat> or I'm going to be easier on you because I know right. you. Right. Either one is extremely bad. Right. Yeah. It, it, when the conversation turns from, you know, turns to bro, you know, <laughs> then you probably are losing right. some kind of quality to the, the employment aspect of a, a friend or even a family member being in that role. My, my guess is that instead, what you want to do is look for the most qualified person for that role. So I don't know, you tell me. Uh, absolutely. I think that's true. Now, one thing that kind of hit my, triggered me when you said that uh, before, just, just kind of staying on that one subject one more time is I have a lot of friends who uh, join a family business. That's mm -hmm. kind of a, that, that happens often. I see it done extremely well. You know, so mm -hmm. there's, but the number one uh, reoccurring theme I hear every time someone leaves because they're upset or whatever, mm -hmm. they say, I can't get away from the business. Like I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, you know, it's Thanksgiving. We're hanging out as a family and they're asking, Hey, how was your sales? You know, last yeah. month or, you know, everything think, bleeds together. Yeah. I think there needs to be a line when you're talking to your friend, your family, it's after five, it's outside of the office. It is yeah. completely gone. You know, so I've had a lot of family members leave just, just from that low business was still good. It's just, they couldn't take a mental break. Right. And I feel like, as long as you kind of understand that, that could probably help. But, but no, uh, what, what was your question earlier? Because I'm sorry that triggered one more well, thing. Well, no, yeah. I mean, I, I think that the opposite of hiring, well, you know, honestly, that brings up a, a, a idea in my head that why do people hire their best friend? Because they're right there. They, they're having beers with them. They're talking sports with them. They're, you know, they're doing whatever they're doing together and they're talking about their business and they need help. And it's the easy route or for what, what seems like the easy route is like, well, you need extra work. You need a job or, you know, I could pay you. Hey, this would be great. You know, just come help me. And they're not really thinking about the business, you know, first they're thinking about any easy sort of hack to not have to go through the uncomfortable process of diligently looking at who should I hire? Who's the best candidate? bringing them on, onboarding them and, and making it more of, of a formal, uh, legitimate thing that's going to suit them in their business. It's just an easy hack. I don't know. You tell me, is it, is that, you know, why would someone want to hire their best friend? You're, I think you're, I think you're right on the right track because I worked at Career Builder for a time. So they gave me thousands of hours of training about yeah. how to hire people, especially salespeople. So it kind of comes mm -hmm. from this. People like to hire that are people that are like them. Like, hey, That's right. I like you. You look like me. Yeah, you act like point. me. We could hang out together. This sounds great. Mm -hmm. That is a huge problem because mm -hmm. if you get, um, there's all these studies across the board that, you know, if you have all men in the office, mm -hmm. you're going to have problems. If you have all women in the office, if you need a variety of people that have different right. ideas, different backgrounds, that look different from you. And so, mm -hmm. All of a sudden, when you have people that look different, act different, think differently, your your company grows like crazy. And yeah. so even I have to mentally think when I'm talking to this person, uh, a, a trick is you have a standardized way of uh, interviewing someone. It's not what kind of color do you like and yeah. <laughs> you know, what, why, what, if you're a fruit, what would you be? You know, yeah. all those kind of dumb questions you're asking because you're bored, you know, it's, is not the kind of question you need to have standard questions and a reason for them and judge people the same way, you know, across the board. And so that's kind of part of it is not hiring someone that acts like you, that looks like you is, is going to help your company grow tremendously because they're going to yeah. look at things from a different perspective Yeah, and it's going to make your company grow. But I think that's the main yeah. reason why you hire your best friend. Cause yeah. I know I get along with this person, but you got to think, I don't care about after five. Yes. You know, 
that doesn't matter. What matters is the time that they're working. Are they right. capable? Especially if you're wanting to turn a profit. I, I think that <laughs> you're right though. Like hiring people that are not like you is also hard because it's easy to to just sit in front of somebody that gets you, you get them. It, it, everything is easy. Um, but But listening to someone come at a problem with a different perspective is hard because it's not how you come at it. Um, you know, or bringing a different skill set or a different level of a skill set, uh, you know, it can make you feel like, okay, you know, where's the value that I have. But, um, I think, I think all that stuff is very important for, you know, not only not hiring people that you are friends with or love, but, um, it works sometimes, right? Sometimes there are relationships that, that it is, it does work. It's amicable and you can not talk about work after, after hours. But I think by and large, um, you know, building your business from scratch legitimately, you know, looking out in the marketplace and saying, you know, who's out there that actually has a high level of skill would fill the culture that we're, we're putting together and can produce again, if we're talking about sales, you don't want to be having these, you know, target meetings or report meetings, quasi report meetings, you know, over dinner. You want to have them in a business environment uh, where it can stay there and the performance is judged um, more black and white. Um, so, you know, I think talking to people, trying to hire people that are not necessarily like you is a really difficult thing. A lot of people don't want to be around people that are not like them just personally. So, you know, that's, that's just kind of innately you want to gravitate towards the people that you like. Yep. You're, you're, you're spot on. It's funny because everything is changing, you know, constantly because when I first started, you know, my manager hiring career, it was always hire your friends, tell all your friends about the company, bring them in, you know? So that was a, that's been a thing for a long time, but mm -hmm. you know, there's always a positive and negative with that. So I do think when I've been in like the Fortune 500 companies and, mm -hmm. and have also just helped with them with consulting and I find that most managers do hire their best friends. Yeah. And that's why you have some bad culture <laughs> go, going on. So yeah, sm smaller sure. companies, you can kind of keep track of it because when I'm going to hire someone, at least three other people have to interview them to make mm -hmm. sure they actually are a good candidate. And somehow bigger companies, you sometimes forget uh, forget that that's important. So I'm just going to hire my best friend and regardless how good they do, uh, yeah. they're going to say in that job. And that's a, you know, that's obviously a problem. So, um, yeah. So let's, let's switch gears here for a minute and talk about hiring sales reps, right? Yeah. So like, let's say your small company owners done a lot of the selling him or herself, and now they're going to replace themselves with a salesperson, or maybe you have a salesperson that's not working out and you need a new one. What are the kind of main attributes that you're looking for in a good, solid sales person? I mean, when yeah. you're when you're trying to put that together, what would you tell people? Oh man, the, you could probably write a whole book on that. On <laughs> yeah, that there have been lots alone. of books written on it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of books written on that. But I would, if I was going to say one thing, um, I would definitely ask them to sell you something. Now it's funny because. I always hate it when people talk about salespeople. They say, hey, look at this movie, that movie where this salesperson is a complete liar and <laughs> this one's yeah. a fraud. And yeah. So I hate the, you know, sell me a pin analogy. It just drives me, it drives me insane. But yeah. uh, personally, I find when I ask them to sell me whatever they were selling before, mm -hmm. um, from their context, like I tell them, who am I? What kind of customer am I? Am I? You know, mm -hmm. if we go through that kind of scenario and you see their, their thought process, you know, mm -hmm. how they go about it. That usually tells you right away if they're a good salesperson or not. I've had many people say, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, if you can't do it now, I don't think you're going to be able to do it. Yeah. You know, uh, that's a great point. And, and I me. like that approach because if they are currently selling for another company, then even if they don't do it really well because they're on the spot or, you know, they weren't anticipating doing it or nervous or something, at least in a sort of semi failed way, they're going to reveal their methodology behind how, how do they approach a sale? You know, and if you, the, the interview interviewer, you know, the person who's potentially going to have to manage the salesperson and know anything about sales, 
you want to know, do they have a pedigree for understanding how to go about prospecting, how to, you know, find new leads on their own if they need to, um, how to get into, um, actually how they put the sale together, what, 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 you know, how they approach proposals, assuming, you know, cause I think a lot of times you want to hire a good salesperson for your company. You want to hire from other companies that are selling maybe not your product or competitor's product, but a similar type of sale. If it's a service sale, then you want someone to sold a service. If it's a product yeah. internally, you know, you want someone to sold a product. So if you, if you know anything about sales and you are interviewing this person, you're going to be able to, I think through that, that method, you're going to be able to pick up some of the things that they already know. And you'll try to figure out where, the, where do they land in terms of how far we need to bring them. Yep. Big, big, big time. And they'll always say, well, I'll do the presentation. I said, well, give me, you know, just quick two minute presentation. Like don't, don't, <laughs> don't give me the whole thing. And what's the next step? What's the next step? And then at the end, I always say no three times. Mm -hmm. And then if they make it through three times, I, I'm nice enough to say, okay, yes, I'll buy it right now. <laughs> you know, but yeah. if, they, if they at least work through it a little bit, yeah. not pushy, not mean, not, you know, oh, you're an idiot if you don't say, you know, yeah. Those, if they have some sort of real methodology of ask, you know, asking why you objections. say no, yeah, just mm -hmm. something, anything, then I know I can take them the rest of the way <laughs> because right. I'm not expecting them to be perfect. You know, right. If someone's perfect, then I know they're, they're just acting. <laughs> you know, I'm not really looking for an actor. I'm looking for someone right. who genuinely understands the process and I can teach them the rest of the way. What about somebody who doesn't have any kind of formal training. Like I know back in the day when I w worked at CentOS Corporation um, as an outside sales rep, I got formally trained and it's really where I, I draw on a lot of my, um, the way I approach a B2B sale. And uh, it was invaluable that training, um, someone who doesn't have that level of training, they're coming from maybe another small business. Um, is that someone that you want to be sitting in front of? Or you, you would You would look at as a candidate for sales or you know, do you think companies really should be looking for someone who has a pedigree? Yeah, I mean, it, these these days, I mean, before I would always hire someone that had one or two years of experience, you know, mm -hmm. but you don't get that luxury, you know, anymore. You, you're trying to talk anybody into it, a, a teacher, mm -hmm. uh, someone who's waiting at your table, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. hey, would you like to do sales? You know, so yeah. it is uh, anybody and everybody. So for me, I think at the end of the day for us, it's do they have the capability to do it? And how I train a lot of our, even our customers, when I tell them about hiring, you need to have levels. So you have zero experience. You don't know sales at all. You're coming in at level one and here's, you know, here's your pay. Here's what I'm mm -hmm. expecting. And my job is to get you to level two and mm -hmm. level three. And then eventually when you're really good at sales, you're going to make you know this much money. Like that's my right. expectation. So you're kind of helping them through that. And so with the understanding of what level are they, and I'm going to pay them for the level they are, mm -hmm. but I'm going to help them get better and better is the key. So I love hiring people with zero experience. Okay. Um, one of then they're coachable, expert, trainable. Exactly. One of, one of the success at field routes was we took people that were non-sales people and turned them into salespeople because sales is not, uh, I got convinced you to do something. It's just, mm -hmm. all it really is, is presenting, this is how I can help you. You know, and, right. and people that can do that, <clears throat> you don't have to have a sales background to be able to do that. So it actually comes more genuine, I think, when you're not a salesperson. Because I wouldn't, yeah. I wasn't a salesperson really when I first started into sales. I didn't think I would like it. I didn't want to be a salesperson. Mm -hmm. you know, for all the connotations that comes with that. But then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I I care about the customer more than I care about myself and I want them to be successful. And so when that comes across and when you're genuine, you know, you're gonna make more sales than everybody else. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I like is hiring I've hired teachers before. They're like the best salespeople you'll ever have and really yeah. good support people who yeah. care about the customer. I mean those those kind of people do extremely well. So that's yeah, kind of my, they're, they're kind of naturally geared towards educating, which is kind of the, that's the sale. It's, you know, an educational sale is going to be probably more successful than a non-educational sale. Yep. A hundred, a hundred percent. So that's, 
I prefer someone that doesn't have all the 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 bad sales knowledge of the past twenty years, you know, and I have to fix yeah. it. You know, yeah, I like yeah. starting from ground zero and build, building up from there, not forget everything you've been doing for the past three years. And right. Now I want you to do it this way, you know. So right, right. That's usually yeah, well, that's the key. You know, and some of the things that we talked about um, earlier, we were talking about um, a lot of ser especially service well, small service companies. Um, they they're they're hiring a lot of young people, right? So um, let's talk about that for a minute, because I think that there are a lot of young people out in the market looking for jobs, um, either post high school, post post college. Um, you know, what's the benefit to hiring a, a younger person in a sales role specifically um, for for a service company? I mean, is it is it should should they be looking for for young people specifically or should they be looking for a retired teacher? Right. Like you were just mentioning. Uh, yeah. I know there's probably value on both sides, but let's talk to Def you. Definitely value on both sides. But if you're not hiring young people now, you're going to be in trouble. You know, I don't care what home service business you're in. Mm -hmm. If you look at your employees, if you don't have young people learning from the experienced people, your your company's going to be in trouble. It's like a yeah. ticking time clock. So as long as you can get young people in the door and Young people is funny because everyone always says young people don't want to work. And you know, that's not the case. You don't know how to recruit them is, yeah. is the case. And so what's really cool is when you get uh, young people, the one thing that's interesting is they have it in their mind. I don't have experience. Okay. So some people make the big mistake of lying to prove they have experience. I see. And when I find them lying, it's over. I don't care how amazing they are. I don't care anything. If they're a liar, I don't want, I don't want them to be part of my company or any company right. I'm with. Um, so I think just being genuine, being honest, I don't have sales experience, but I want to, I want to learn. I'm eager to learn, you know, just be honest with people. And the good news is in this market, people need salespeople mm -hmm. uh, desperately. So they're still going to hire you. But if you, if you lie and you get caught in a lie and you will get caught either then or, you know, into the job even if they find out you lied you're it's over the it's game over, is yeah. over and so uh my grandfather used to always say you know your word is all you have so if if, if you lie you're done <laughs> you know you can yeah. never fix it so it's the same thing in, in in business so i would highly recommend hiring young people if they are lying or or stretching the truth is how, <laughs> what they like to say don't hire them because it's not going to be a good it's not going to be good for you or your business. So, so pressing into the, the what they put on the resume and, you know, genuinely asking for, for answers that they would only know to give if they truly did it, probably a good, good piece of advice. Yeah. And also just looking at them because they start doing a lot of this. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of that. Uh -huh. <laughs> a lot of not looking at you anymore. Yeah. And you're like, well, so, so far you haven't laid out a great case for hiring young people. So they're liars. So we're going to hire a bunch of liars. Well, why, why, is, what's, the, what's the good side? So how are we, how are we, how are we out? What's the problem? I don't understand. Well, I think every age group has a group of really talented people yeah. and they have liars and they have people in the middle, you know, yeah, okay. I don't care who you are. So there's, there's young people who are lying. There's young people who just want a job and just check a box, but there's certain young people who want to excel and want to do better and be better. And that's the real key is finding that top talent because you can go right. to a teacher and find a terrible teacher. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter how long yeah. you've been working. There's so understanding that there's top talented people out there. Mm -hmm. And right now it's so competitive for young people. It's, it's, it's really hard for service industries and really in the industry because everyone is competing for that top talent, the people that aren't going to college anymore. So yeah. they're looking for a different career. Like everyone is trying to get them and everyone's throwing a lot more money than probably they're worth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so uh, the nice thing is for you is understanding that they're extremely valuable. And yes, there's top talent out mm -hmm. there. You just got to go find it. Yeah. And that's any, the, any, that's any the hints on where we should go to find this top talent that's hiding in, out there in the wilderness somewhere. <laughs> I. One of my customers, it was funny because I did this conference and I do a lot of conferences about how to you know, hire young people. Yeah. And uh, 
I, I got a call like a couple of months later and he goes, I did it. I hired a young person. I thought it was not possible. <laughs> but what, what ended up happening was they were servicing a home and a young okay. person walked out and all they did was they said, is there anything I can do to help you? And they said, in, in the past, I would just say, no, I've got it. Thank you. But he goes, it triggered it. Wait a minute. This might be one of those top talented people, you know, because yeah, they, okay. they, okay. they, they reached out to me, you know, that's kind of, yeah. kind of rare. So then all of a sudden, I think, uh, you know, that's, that's the key is keeping an eye out, looking for people who are a little bit more outgoing, a little mm -hmm. bit more open to talk to you. Hold the conversation is actually pretty hard. Um, it's hard for adults, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, these days because of how social media True. is, but. I think the biggest thing is if they can carry a good conversation, you go, this is person I need to start recruiting. Mm -hmm. my, my boss makes fun of me because uh, when, when we're in an Uber ride, I'm like recruiting the Uber driver. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's tons of great, great talent out there. Um, yeah. But the key is they're not always applying. Like if you put a you know, job posting out there. Yeah. That's not really how you're going to find the talent anymore. I mean, it is, it does work. I'm not saying mm -hmm. it doesn't, but. You have to be looking and actively looking and being out in the community and doing community service and telling people about your industry. You yeah. know, those kind of things go a long way. So let's take this, find these young people. Let's take this one step further, right? Dig a little deeper. You you've got um, okay. Let's say I'm out there. I'm observing. I am running across people in the service industry um, typically because that's what you're going to run into. And you find some people that you've identified that might be top talent. What what do you do next? You know, like how can a what's the next step for taking someone who just at face value you think might have the markers of a successful person in your company? You're you know, sizing them up. What's the next step? Do you bring them into a you know an interview or and then proposal for like a short term trial project or program or you know, what, where do they go from there? <laughs> That's a great question. So it's funny because people always hire the way they wanted to be hired or they were hired. Yeah. And they got to realize that is gone. Like if you're, yeah. if you're recruiting people the same way you did four years ago, mm -hmm. you're not going to hire any young people. Like you're, you're going to be in trouble. So when you recruit them in the past, it was, why should I hire you? Mm-hmm. Now it's the other way around. Why should I work for you? And if you don't understand that mindset in the recruiting process, yeah. you're going to be in trouble. So what ends up happening is when you, uh, young people want, uh, they don't care about money, which is kind mm -hmm. of an odd, odd thing to believe. Right. Most people Especially say, I, I don't sales. believe, I don't believe it, you know, but uh, they care about their overall life, which is if I could go back to my career, I wish I would have done that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just worked from the moment I got up to the mo moment I went to bed. But right. that they want, they saw their parents work themselves to death and not really get anywhere, mm -hmm. and so they're thinking, why would I want to do that? Like that doesn't doesn't make any sense to me. So they just have a different outlook. It's you know, it's it's different. They they still want to work, but the key is flexibility. So when you're recruiting them, you need to get a uh, help them understand why they should work for you. Mm -hmm. And then you got to have, when they walk out of their car, the, the walk up to your building inside your building, all has to be like a positive experience. Mm -hmm. And people always like roll their eyes and they say, whatever, you know, but I, the, the customer that recruited that young person, they actually got a ping pong table in their office and they were, they did the okay. interview playing a game of ping pong. Yeah. <laughs> and they said, this is the best person I've ever hired. They're fantastic. They, they want to work. And so they're going on and on and on. But I think for you, understanding that they're looking for not just people think if you're playing and enjoying yourself, mm -hmm. you're not working. And that's mm -hmm. not the case anymore. You need to uh, bring the two together. So uh, it, does it just need to all be kind of more informal? Like, is that kind of what you're saying? Or do we need to go buy all, everybody buy ping pong tables? You know what I mean? <laughs> I think it needs to be unique for you. Because if you do the exact same thing that everyone does, then I think one of my uh, customers said the best. He goes, I like to have fun. And so if, it, if, it, if it's kind of fun for you, if you enjoy doing it, then mm -hmm. that's going to be a little bit more. So not necessarily informal, 
but you need to think of people enjoying themselves. Like mm -hmm. one, one measure that I use when I, when I like manage people is I look at how many people are smiling, you know? So if no one's smiling in my team and I'm in trouble, then uh, I'm not doing a good job. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I think it's not just about being informal. It's about a, an experience, having fun. And are you coming in? Like when you see companies, service companies that hire a lot of really amazing salespeople, mm -hmm. there's bright colors on the wall. There's huge logos. There's, you know, it's dream big. There's, you know, yeah. You're like walking into Disneyland almost. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Uh, I think when they walk into a space, they want to see, can I have fun and work hard? And yeah. that's what you, that's the image you want to convey. So, so this if is, you have young people in interview and they never call you back, you did something wrong in that <laughs> process. Okay, that's interesting. Well, it's it's interesting when we're talking about how there's a, there's a connection to what we were talking about, how you you want to hire people that are not like you you know, uh, because it's easy to hire people like you and it doesn't always work out. And so then as we talk about the experience and the environment that you're setting, culture you're building, it really needs to be for first and foremost for the benefit of the team, the employees, the culture that you're building and the, the company. And so maybe if you are um, a little out of date or out of touch with what is in bringing those people around you, which could be uncomfortable and hard, uh, might be the answer because you're gonna, the answers you're going to get are what you wouldn't naturally, naturally think of. And it wouldn't necessarily be that you're against it. It's just that you wouldn't have had that idea. Yep. So if you don't, you know, if you're not like a world-class table tennis champion, then, you know, you, you may not have fun playing ping pong. So you don't have a ping pong table, but maybe three of the people that work there, you know, would love to do that while they're waiting for you to put the schedule together. Right. Like, so, so when the new hire comes in and they see, oh, they're, 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 they're having a good time, but they're also getting their work done. Um, it's going to be much more inviting. Exactly. Exactly. So it's, there's a lot of little things to do, but that, that, that's some big ones. If you're not doing that, you're going to be in trouble. No, you don't have to like go completely crazy and spend, yeah. you know, change your office completely, but you need to think of the environment that you're bringing that employee into mm -hmm. does it look fun does it look like people are smiling like if if the if your employees don't look happy mm -hmm. that's going to be a problem and, and it's a problem definitely. for your employees you know, yeah. your current employees it's not just right. not just young people everyone likes to have a, a good time enjoy their work yeah. so it's going to help out everybody I love this. This has been a great conversation. Um, uh, unfortunately, we gotta we gotta bring it to an end. It just seems like we just got started. We've covered a lot of ground here. <laughs> we really um, did. Yeah, and and we probably need to you know have a part two. But if anybody wants to talk more about this with Mark, definitely reach out to him on LinkedIn. We'll put that down below. Um, and uh, and it, of course, field routes too. Um, I'm not really familiar with the app, but so couldn't necessarily. You know, speak to it. But if you want to know more about what Mark does at Field Routes, Field Routes, then you know there's that. We'll put that link to that website there. Uh, but yeah, it's been a great conversation. I think this is a topic that a lot of businesses, especially small service-based businesses, who are looking to hire, not necessarily what I would call a professional uh, salesperson. You know, that ha is degreed and certified in various tools and platforms. Someone who is more maybe entry-level salesperson. Um, that's trying to build up to that professional career, um, I think, um, and, and sometimes turns into professional career while they are, have built, you know, they could do it all inside the same company while the company is growing. Um, this is a lot of great, great value, great advice for, for that person. So thank you. No, this was a lot of fun. So thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right. We'll, uh, we'll catch you at another time and um, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you again. And thank you everyone for listening. Hey, thanks again for tuning in. Um, I hope you're getting value out of this. Uh, if you didn't know, we have an email newsletter that follows this podcast, um, Exploring Growth newsletter. If you go to harvardmurray.com and you click on podcast at the top, you'll see a little submission box there about a quarter of the way down. You can sign up for the email. Um, every week, I literally sit down and write my thoughts of what's going through my head at the, at the moment, you know, things that I'm dealing with, with clients, 
um, you know, concepts that I'm learning or deployed that have worked. Um, I, I talk about everything that, it, that marketing, sales, uh, customer success, everything in between. So if that's something that you're interested in uh, reading or uh, subscribing to, definitely go there and check that out.